Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jawad. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you for turning on my channel. Please hit the like, uh, subscribe button down below and right next to it is the bell notification. When you hit that, I try to upload my videos weekly. I have a crazy schedule sometimes, so I don't always do it weekly, but when I do, you'll be first to be notified. If you're watching on Facebook, thank you very much. Please hit the like button down below and if you find this information valuable, please share with a friend. Sharing is caring and I always appreciate it. Hope you enjoy the video. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jawad. I'm going to answer a question that a lot of the, when I work with females, especially postmenopausal females, and they're estrogen dominant. They're very curious in how are they estrogen dominant if they're in menopause and they're not producing the amount of hormones they did when they were younger. Now, it's a great question. So I always have to remind them then, when you're going through menopause, your ovaries, which made up most of your hormones, now they shut down. So where are your hormones being produced? They're being produced in the adrenal glands. Now the adrenal glands are the size of a quarter and they sit on top of your kidneys. However, they're also multi they're multifactorial with functions. They control the mineral corticoids, the sodium potassium balances. They control cortisol levels, your stress hormone. It controls your sex hormones, your progesterones, your estrogens, your testosterones. But also it, it, also it produces the fight or flight response the dopamine, the norepinephrine, the, the, and the epinephrine response. So when you're going through your change of life, this is where a lot of times it's going to create an imbalance and due to either diet, lifestyle, HRT therapy, so forth and so on, you're going to be more estrogen dominant. Now the question is, again, it's why I, why I should have lower estrogen, why do I have high estrogen? And when I work with my female patients, I always want to do, of course, a full blood, blood work. I want to know what their thyroid numbers are. But in addition, I want to figure out where I do a female hormonal panel because I want to know where the estrogen levels are and the progesterones and the DHEA is. So with symptoms with estrogen dominance, now when you have estrogen dominance, you're going to inadvertently have low progesterone because they work as a teeter-totter. If one's high, the other one's going to be low. And one of the things I always have to explain is that estrogen is like your gas pedal and progesterone is the brake. So this is why when you have estrogen dominance, you have anxiety, irritability, depression, acne, weight gain, especially with the thighs, the tummy, low libido, fibroids, cancer. Why fibroids and why cancer? Remember, the, one of the functions of estrogen is for cell replication. One of the functions of progesterone is cell maturation. So this is why, again, too much estrogen dominance, you're more prone for fibroids, cysts, cancers. Breast tenderness, mood swings, insomnia, hot flashes, thyroid dysfunction. When you have too much circulating estrogen, what that does, it inadvertently shuts down the thyroid gland. So just some facts. So what happens is that, you know, postmenopausal, if estrogen is going to drop, so is progesterone. But still, you're looking at a ratio. I always look at the ratio. All your hormones now are being produced in the adrenal glands. Now your stress gland, your stress hormone, cortisol, what makes cortisol is progesterone. So if you have increased stresses, if you're dumping out more, if, you're, if your body needs to produce more cortisol, it's going to lower the, estrogen, the progesterone because progesterone is needed for cortisol. So what's going to happen is that you're going to be more estrogen dominant. It acts as a teeter-totter. Okay, so let me, just remind, let me just go over this again. When you are in a fight or flight response, stress, it could be mental, physical, chemical, emotional, it could be anything. The more cortisol that's being produced, it's going to, what, what's needed to make it is progesterone. So inadvertently, this is where estrogen dominance is going to occur, postmenopause. In addition, fat makes estrogen. Your fat, your adipose tissue has estrogen receptors on it. So again, the more fatty tissue you have, the more estrogen dominant you're going to, you're going to be. Now again, this also includes men as well. Now, another other ways that you're estrogen dominant, 
So back when the pill came around, the pill was more of an estrogen-laced pill. The thing about that is that you had estrogen, repla uh, horm estrogen re re uh, replacement therapy. It was, this is where cancer came because cancer loves estrogen. Why? Because the function of estrogen is for cell replication. So then they switched it over to HRT. Now they're giving you estrogen and progesterone. The problem is it didn't work too well and then still cancer was created. So now they either give you like Provera, which is synthetic uh, progesterone, or they give you Primpro, which is synthetic estrogen progesterone. So this is where, again, you want to work with your ob or if you want to work with me, I want to figure out where your levels are so we can make adjustments accordingly. Now the body makes different, the body actually makes four different types of estrogens, but I only just want to go over two. One is estrone, E1. Another one is estriol, E3. Now estrone, E1, this is the main estrogen that's, produ that's being produced with menopause, okay? And it's made from androgens, which is from the adrenal glands. Now, androgens are, is testosterone. Testosterone gets converted from an enzyme called aromatase to estrogen. And this is how females get their estrogen levels. Now, what happens is that estrone, E1, if there's a, we have good estrogen and bad estrogen, and that's a process through the liver pathway. So if you have fatty liver, if you have poor liver health, if you're taking medications, in previous videos I always talk about liver health by using glutathione, cysteine, um, selenium, because you want the good liver because when the, body, when the body converts the estrogen, it can either convert it to good estrogen or bad estrogen. And you want more the conversion of the good estrogen and not the cancer causing bad estrogen because E1 can convert to E2 estradiol, uh, which also, that's the conversion, that can convert to the bad estrogen. And that'll actually increase your chances of cancer. So estriol, this is kind of a waste product of E2, of estradiol. But also to estriol, it's, it's kind of good because it acts as a buffer to E2, so again, so it acts almost as an anti-cancer, the anti-cancer estrogen. Because if you have too much E2, again, you're going to increase your cancer risk. So all these will increase the chances of being estrogen dominant. Now other things, especially with men, okay, so with men, this conversion is very important as well because we have the same process. However, we want to be more estrogen dominant. Like the teeter-totter, we want to have be, I'm sorry, testosterone dominant and estrogen negative. What happens though with men, it can, there's a conversion from aromatase, so it converts the testosterone to estrogen. And this is where men, it doesn't matter if you're 18 or 80, this is where you get erectile uh, difficulties. You get man boobs, why? Because the fat, the adipose tissue, has estrogen receptors. So the more fat that you take in, the sugar gets converted, and this is where men get man boobs, and so forth and so on. And prostate issues. It was once believed that men, the men who have, they have prostate issues due to too much flow in testosterone, which is actually not at all. It's because men get prostate issues due to too much estrogen. So you want to avoid, again, you want to avoid the aromatase, the conversion. In addition to, again, being estrogen dominant, again, why estrogen dominant? It could only be the hormone pills, so forth and so on, but also to animal products. You could be eating it. Now, the, the food, the standard American diet, the food, the source, is full of hormones, okay? They're jacking all their, the cattle with hormones. Dairy, something called xenoestrogens. These are estrogen mimickers, and you get these from the pesticides, the herbicides. GMO food, I always state, pay a little bit extra. Get, again, get the organic, because the foods now, GMO foods, again, they're laced with all these, again, the pesticides, the herbicides, especially soy, corn, beet sugar. By taking in all that, this is the reason why you're going to be estrogen dominant, especially if you're postmenopause. So the question is, what do you do about it? First and foremost, you can't, I know I understand, you can't remove the stressor if it's due to a stress level. However, I always, I always emphasize you want to exercise, meditate, go to a calming place, 
calm down the mind if the stress is the reason why you're estrogen dominant due to cortisol. Next is always diet. You want to clean up the diet. Always, I can't, I can't stress it enough. Clean up the wheat, the gluten, the soy, the dairy, the peanuts. All that stuff is, it will stimulate the estrogen receptors. If you drink, stop drinking beer. That's nothing but gluten and hops. Diet, organic, try to eat the best, the cleanest you can. Choose organic and hormone free. Cage free, hormone free, grass fed, cattle, chicken, turkey, whatever your fancy is, okay? Wild caught fish. You wanna stay away from the hormones, okay? All those hormones are the reason why you're estrogen dominant. Next, cruciferous vegetables. Cruciferous vegetables, the broccoli, the cabbage, the, the kale, what it does, it has an ingredient called DIM. One of the things that DIM does, it not only cleans out the liver pathway, but it lessens the risk of the conversion of the estrogen to go from the cancer causing more to the healthy kind. Because that's also, and that's going to help lower that estrogen dominance. It's going to kickstart the, the, your liver into how it's, supposed to, how it's supposed to work, and that's supposed to clean out a lot of the metabolites. Iodine. Iodine is phenomenal for the thyroid. Remember, if you're in estrogen dominance, you're going to shut down the thyroid gland. Now, iodine is phenomenal. I did a video on the function of selenium, selenium working with the thyroid gland, but also do iodine. Iodine is phenomenal because you need iodine and tyrosine to make thyroid hormone work. The only caveat is if you have an autoimmune, if you have Hashimoto's, or if you have hyperthyroid, okay, you want to stay away from iodine because, it, it, because you're, going to, you're basically you're, you're going to speed it up and that's going to cause a whole bunch of other de uh, defects. Other supplements, nettle root, chase tree, that, those two are going to help, again, help clean out the estrogens. It's going to, the main thing that you want to focus on is activating more of the clean estrogens and cleaning out the bad estrogens which in turn will lower the estrogen, the, bat, the estrogen and bring up the progesterone. Next, now again, progesterone cream. If you're gonna to choose to do progesterone cream, please work, please work with a functional medicine practitioner. Please work with somebody who knows what they're doing. Do not just go to the store and get progesterone cream if you do not know what you're doing because again, you're going to tailspin and I don't recommend that. So I hope you joined the video. If you feel like it's helpful, please share with a friend. Again, this, you, if you're on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you the next time. Thank you very much for watching.